Let's look at the Midwest. Kansas will open up against the winner of a first four game between Texas Southern and Texas A&M Corpus Christi, uh, Christie, who won the Le the Southland. They were 500 team in conference play, but they were able to get in to the field. San Diego State lost a heartbreaker in the conference championship game to Boise State in the Mountain West. They're the eighth. They will face Creighton. In that round, Richmond, who won the Atlantic 10, is a 12. Iowa, Big Ten champion, getting the five. And the Providence Friars, two times in Providence history. They've been to the Final Four. They're back into the tournament for the first time since 2018. Those Final Four trips back in the 70s and under Rick Pitino in 1987 with Billy Donovan and Del Ray Brooks. See if the Friars under Ed Cooley can make a run. They'll take on South Dakota State. South Dakota Ooh. State, one of two teams in the country to go unblemished in conference play. The Jackrabbits went 20 and 0 and route to winning the Summit League. Let's look at the bottom half of the Midwest now. Look at the rest of this. Get your reaction to the path that Kansas has in front. Auburn is going to be the two seed. Auburn, Auburn in the two seed. They're playing in Greenville, South Carolina. Couldn't they just meet? Couldn't they just meet in Gadsden or something? They're playing Jacksonville <laughs> State, which is probably I don't know, maybe an hour and a half uh, from Auburn in the state of Alabama. The Gamecocks going as uh, representative of the Atlantic Sun. They won the regular season. Bellarmine won the tournament, but they're not eligible because they're transitioning into Division One. So you see the other matchups: SC in Miami, Wisconsin, Colgate. LSU without Will Wade against Iowa State. Miami getting back into the field. That veteran ball club of Jim Laranega. The Hurricanes in for the first time since 2018. Their 11th tournament appearance. Best run has been to the Sweet 16. And we'll see how they how they start. So Auburn is the two in the bracket with Kansas. Um, Seth, what do you think about this path right now for the Jayhawks and some problem spots for either Auburn or Kansas in the upper or bottom half of the bracket? I absolutely love Kansas's path until they get to Iowa because Iowa's going to get up and down. They're going to be up to score it and the matchup obviously with Jalen Wilson and Keegan Murray will be interesting. That that to me will be interesting. I think the, this bracket in general. Look, I mean, look at this bracket. You got the tall and the short of it. USC and Miami. <laughs> yes. USC one of the tallest teams in college basketball. <laughs> one of the shortest. Then you got like a black and blue game. San Diego State and Creighton. That's going to be the first to 60 as Bills would say is going to win that game. And then you know you look at Iowa Richmond. That's another tempo game. So I think there's some really interesting matchups in this game. Plus LSU being coached by an interim coach against an Iowa State team that we were surprised maybe got in the tournament with that many losses in league play. Yeah, you talk about a first game to 60, first one to 60 with LSU and Iowa State. After that game, it could take some while to repaint the rims. <laughs> <laughs> Six eleven. At least Wisconsin and Colgate in that part of the bracket as well in the Midwest. Uh, what what strikes you about about these this part of the bracket funds? Yeah, I, I'm looking down at the Seth mentioned it. The USC Miami game is yeah. intriguing to me <laughs> just because you talk about. If I'm not mistaken, they're they're, what, they're the third tallest team in all of college basketball. SC, the USC, right, yeah, yeah. with tremendously length. Boogie Ellis has been playing really well for them as of late, and then you have the Miami Hurricanes. Very, very small, four, three guards who could really take you off the bounce. Isaiah Wong has been absolutely terrific. Uh, Cam McGusty, one of the best pull up games in all of college basketball. And I just, that's going to be fascinating to me. It's going to be interesting, though, know, Jay. At times, USC could turn that basketball over with the way that Miami traps you and with the way that they trap you and can turn you over. That could actually be advantage Miami over USC. I think it's advantage Miami. Uh, totally because you know USC does a really good job of defending the paint. They're not the shot blocking team they were last year with Evan Mobley but Isaiah Mobley and Chavez Goodwin can protect the rim and they, they do a good job guarding. Mm -hmm. uh, Drew Peterson is one of the most versatile players in the country but the way Miami plays with that five out yes. offense with all the ball screens they set and the cutting they do and, they, and have playmakers that they can get their own shot like Isaiah Wong and Cam mm -hmm. Augusti you know and Charlie Moore handling the ball and, and they, they're not great defensively mm -hmm. Miami but they they force a ton of turnovers. <laughs> they get nine steals a game. So yes. they go after the ball. You set a ball screen. They're going to trap it. Uh, I think that's going to be one of the most fun games uh, uh, the first round in that region. I think the bottom of the region is interesting with Auburn. I mean, like Auburn, Auburn, Wisconsin, I think would be a fascinating game. All right, obviously, Wisconsin trying to control the tempo of the game. Auburn trying to speed it up. Do you trust Auburn's guards against the big guards 
of Wisconsin. Will Wisconsin be able to attack certain matchups? But then on the other hand, who's guarding Jabari Smith? Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a really interesting game in terms of contrast, in terms of pace of the game, style of play, and matchups. I think Tyler Wall can actually guard him. Ty Tyler Wall is a multi, he's a very versatile uh, defender, and he moves his feet really well on the perimeter because I don't have to worry about Jabari Smith like beating him off the bounce. He's just got to keep him in front and challenge his shots at 6'8". Yeah, I think that's a really, really good draw for Auburn. I don't think they're playing their best basketball right now, but an opportunity to get well, so to speak, for, and before some major challenges come. Okay. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.